So you probably already have sort of a basic understanding of what interest is. You know, anytime you borrow or lend money, usually interest is charged. The way of the bank or whoever's lending the money to make some sort of profit off of a loan, simple interest, it can be calculated using this formula where I is the, the interest that you earn, P is the principal amount of money initially invested or borrowed, R is the rate at which interest is charged per year, and this is usually given as a percentage and we, we convert it to a decimal, and T is how long the money is lent or borrowed in years. So this formula should make sense. The amount of interest you earn is going to be equal to how much you invest times the rate times the time. Another formula we're going to look at here is the amount formula. So this tells us the amount of money that we have at the end of a lending period, and that's just going to be equal to however much we put in plus the interest that we earned. So how much interest is earned if $1,200 is invested at 5% per year, simple interest for three years? So really our goal here is to just pick out all of the information that we need to work with the simple interest formula. Okay, so we do have all that information. So if we look at our, our formula, we need a principal amount, which we've got. We need an interest rate, which we have, and we need a time, which we have. So we're gonna just substitute all of those values into our formula. You can see that I've expressed my percentage as a decimal. So I just divide by 100 to express that as a decimal. And I multiply these three numbers together and you see that I've got 180. So we can conclude that in three years, we will earn $180 in interest. Okay, next one says, how much interest is paid if $400 is borrowed at 8% per annum? That's just a way of, another way of saying per year. Simple interest for seven months. Again, the, the percentage has to be written as a decimal, so we're going to divide that by 100, just like we did in the previous example. You'll notice here the term is given in months, not years. Okay, and our simple interest formula works for years, so we're going to have to just make a slight conversion. Seven months in a year, and a year has 12 months. So I'm just going to write that time as 7 twelfths, right? 7 twelfths of a year. If I multiply those numbers together, you'll see that I get 18.67. And we can conclude that seven months we'll earn $18.67 in interest. One final example I want to look at here. This man deposits $500 into a GIC that earns 6% per year simple interest. You're being asked to develop a linear model to relate amount to time. So we want to see how his amount of money changes over time. All right, so remember that interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time. We're given all of that information here except for time. What we're going to do is just sort of fill in what we have. Okay, so you can see I've expressed my percentage as a decimal, and I've just kind of cleaned it up a little bit and, and written it as I is equal to 30 times T. Now, if you think back to amount, amount is equal to your principal, so how much you start with plus your interest. Well, we have both of those pieces of information with the exception of time. But remember, our goal here is to relate amount to time. So we're going to simply substitute our interest, which is 30t, into our a equals p plus i formula. We know our initial principal, and we know our interest rate over time, so we can relate amount to time in this way. You can see that I've developed a linear function here. Right? This would be my fixed portion, this would be my variable portion, or your, your y-intercept and your slope, if you will. I'll plot that on a graph, and you can see over time, his amount increases linearly. There are really no surprises there. Uh, we've, we're varying partially with time because we have a y-intercept value that's not zero. So that would be a nice little linear model there for this situation. Being asked, how long will it take to the nearest month for his investment to double? So we know his original investment was $500. So to double that investment, we would have to end up with $1,000. So what we're going to do is just simply substitute in 1,000 into the amount for our linear model, and we're going to try to solve for t here. This turns out to be not too complicated as it's just a linear expression. We're going to bring 500 over to the other side, and we divide both sides by 30, and we will end up with a time of 16.67. So that's 16 years and 8 months for the investment to double. Remember, time is measured in years, so we've got 16 years and 0.67 of a year is approximately equal to eight months. Follow-up question C here says, what annual rate of interest must be earned so that the investment doubles in eight years? So our goal is to solve for rate of interest. So we want to solve for R in our formula. But if you look at our linear model, we don't actually have variable R at all. We need to sort of backtrack and look at our initial model of A equals P plus I. The only way to bring an R into this equation would be to rewrite this as 
P plus PRT. We know that I is equal to PRT. So we could start substituting into this formula. We've got a bunch of given information. We've got our doubled investment, our initial investment, our time, which was eight years. And we can really just sort of substitute all of that information in and, and sort of rearrange algebraically to solve for our R value. Remember that when you solve for R, it'll be written as a decimal. It's good practice to sort of write that as a percentage just for communication purposes. So that's, that's really it for that one.